Howdy, it's Mr. Pete again, and I'm sitting next to my Rhodes 7-inch shaper, and I thought I'd do a little project on it today. Now, last year, I made some little anvils like this, and they're just aluminum paperweights cast in my home foundry. And this one was very quickly milled clean on the top and the bottom with uh, the Bridgeport mill. So let's do one on the shaper today, and of course this could take a heck of a lot longer than the milling machine, but it might be a fun little project, so let's get started. Yesterday I went out in my foundry and I cast up a couple of these in two different sizes, so I'm going to deal with the smaller one today because it's a small shaper. So I'll start by cutting off the gate fairly close, so there's a minimum amount to remove, so we'll do that here. Uh, the metal cutting bandsaw. Now in the uh, extra credit there is a complete uh, section where I cast these up. It's very optional because you've seen that kind of thing many times so I'll put it at the end and I think I'll speed it up. Alrighty I'll saw the gate off. In a recent video I showed you how to set the length of the stroke and the position of the stroke and the speed of the stroke, so I'm not going to repeat that. It's already set up for the stroke length that I need right now and it's about a hundred strokes per minute. Any and all castings that are made with a split pattern have a parting line and that's it almost looks like a seam. It goes all the way around it's a little ragged in here. I should clean up with a file. Maybe I'll do that later on. Maybe I will not. But I'll start by shaping the bottom. And all we're, we're doing is t t getting it true and flat. So I would rather do this side first. I was thinking about this. So it's going to go into the vise like that. Well, I don't want to set it on the irregular, irregularity there, so I'm going to set it on two little parallels, they're just pieces of quarter inch key stock, and in that way that will be straddled like, like such. But I have to make sure there is no uh, high spots, so I just took a file and cleaned this up on both sides, and now I'll put it in the vise like that on the parallels and tighten it down. And it's ready to machine. What I'm showing you now is optional. Castings are irregular and dimensions are only semi-accurate, etc., etc. So I'm using this little surface gauge and my uh, vise sets on a nice smooth plate of aluminum here where I can slide the surface gauge around and I'm just checking to see that it's approximately the same on all four corners. So I'm checking it there and there and they are about the same and now I'll go over to the other side. On the other side, I am actually touching here a little bit, but not over here. So it is irregular, as I told you, but it's within 1 32nd of an inch approximately. Now I'd like to find out which corner is the high corner. Well, I already know this corner right here is the very high corner and that's where I would like to take my first cut but I think I'll go back here and knock this off first I should have uh, taken that to a file you know in the vise or on the belt sander to remove a little bit of the high spots but the whole idea is to remove metal with the shaper so but it's a small shaper and I have to take relatively light cuts I told you I preset the machine, but always with the hand wheel, you can't see my hand on it, but just check to make sure that everything clears. Do not turn the machine on and have a crash, ruin the work or damage the machine or the vise or, or whatever, but you can see I go a little bit past the work on this side and a little bit past the work on this side. So everything is clear and I'm ready to turn the machine on, but I want to make sure also that the depth is such that I'm not going to cause the machine to stall or 
knock the work out of the vise or something like that. So I'll start with a real light cut. That by light I mean the depth of the cut. And that's a bit of a round nose tool that I have in there of high speed steel without a tool holder. But that fits in there quite nicely and make sure that the clapper box can clap. But you probably won't see it clap because it be such a light cut. Or you certainly won't hear it from hence comes the name clapper box. And the tool clear, so I'll turn it on. And I'm going to feed down until it touches off. And I'm setting the power feed. Now the trial cut just allows me to, to know that I have the machine set up and I'm still kind of tentative about this but now I'm going to take 25 thousandths off and I'm going to start all the way from the edge. Again it will not even begin to clean up yet so I won't show all of that just some short little bits. If I was on the bridge port, I would be done with both sides already. And some of you are probably saying, why didn't he set it up this way and use a longer stroke and it wouldn't be as far to move this way? And I had considered that, but on this particular machine with this aluminum plate that I put on here some years ago, it just does not lend itself well to rotate the vise 90 degrees without me drilling some holes and taking a, a lot of time for that. So. I'm just using it as it was set up. Whatever you do, do not stick your finger in there to remove chips. Use a brush. With this little round nose tool, I'm always feeding the same way and then I'm coming back to, the, to this end and feeding this way. Notice that the clapper box is set at zero as is the entire cutting head because it's just a straight across job. My feed rate is about ten thousandths, I might have said that already, and my depth of cut even for the next cut is going to be twenty-five thousandths which is a quarter of a turn. And I think you can see now that this was the high corner as I told you with the surface gauge. If it is too much of a differential you will need to shim your casting or your work in the vise a little bit. But for a paperweight as I said it just doesn't make any difference. You know what, surprisingly it's almost fully cleaned up except for a little bit along this edge so I will take another pass 10 or 15 thousandths uh, deep and that will definitely clean it up and I'm going to use a little bit of the Tap Magic aluminum on it. All right, it fully cleaned up. Pretty decent finish. Certainly good enough for the bottom of a paperweight. All right, let's take it out. Now I would like to make sure there's no burrs on there for when I put it in the vise this way. The vice jaws are cleaned thoroughly and it's going to be gripped by these two sides and there are no imperfections there from casting. Just put it down tight, tighten the vise and I'm going to tap it a little bit as well. Ready to cut. And I have a reason for putting the horn down on this end. 
The, the horn will not be shaped. That'll be filed later on, but we have two different levels here. So I'm going to go all the way across and then after that's cleaned up, perhaps come back and machine this, or I may not. We'll see what happens. Again, I want to check the depth before I start cutting, so I will bring the cutting tool down. And I'm just going to wait until it touches. I'm turning down. And there. Now I'm going to back it off and take off about 25 thousandths. Now for this roughing cut, one can most certainly do some hand feeding instead of power feeding to speed things up. Okay, that was the first pass, so now I'm going to go over it again with uh, another 25 thousandths uh, depth of cut. I think I'm going to put some magic marker black on there just so you can possibly better see what is happening. I'm not sure what we call this little step on an anvil, but I'm going to go ahead and machine it on there up to the black line, perhaps 25 or 35 thousandths deep. Done. Okay, there it is. I'll take a file off camera and, and knock off some of this flashing and the job is done. Time consuming but fun. Well, I did a little hand filing and it's looking pretty good. You could polish or spend as much time as you want on that, but it's good enough for a paperweight. Well, that concludes the video. Stand by for that extra foundry footage if that type of thing interests you. If not, I'll see you next time. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. This is after school extra credit for those who want to watch molding. I've shown.
All right, it's been about a half hour. Let's take a look, see what we got here. Looks usable. And that looks usable all right already. So you have already seen the video where I cleaned these up, so that concludes this extra credit. See you next time.